Hello everyone and welcome to the Gunpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today we'll be taking a look at an alternative dimension where Gundam Age isn't slept on. What I actually mean to say is we'll theorize what a proper 10 year anniversary for Gundam Age could have looked like. Before we start dimension hopping, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Mecha Parts Guy. Mecha Parts Guy is an online retailer that specializes in Gunpla, Evangelion, Kotobikiya, Flame Toys, and many other types of model kit runners and parts to replace anything that you may have lost along the way. No need to buy a whole new kit, just buy the specific mini missing pieces and keep on building. As a member of the Gunpla Network community, you are also entitled to a permanent 10% discount at the store when you use coupon code Gunpla Network 10. Now I do have a couple of disclaimers or points to make rather before we get too deep into this. Yes, COVID may have impacted Bandai's plans for a proper anniversary. Yes, age isn't the most popular show. And yes, this is more from a fan's perspective versus someone who's actually in like the event planning industry or that works for Bandai. I'd also like to say this was well, largely almost entirely inspired by the Kurosama's call for the H3 and HFX Master Grades uh, via the hashtag free Master Grade or free MG H3 and FX. As a fellow Gundam Age fan, I thought it only right that I support that hashtag as it is something I would love to see. And just in general, I think more age love is better. Now, what do I think this anniversary could have looked like? There's a lot of things and different anniversaries in the past have looked different. But generally speaking, if we look at stuff like Seed or Double O or hell, even Code Geass is a more recent example, we could kind of piece together a pretty good idea of what could have happened, generally speaking. Have some kind of live event that would feature bands performing OPs or endings, voice actors doing various things, different parts of the creative teams coming together to talk shop or talk about new content, and so on and so forth. Just little extra tidbits for the fans that want to tune in or are available to show up. Now, of course, with COVID, I can understand that not really being a possible thing. However, there have been other franchises and even other parts of Gundam that have worked around this. Uh, the big JoJo Part 6 announcement live event was live streamed internationally. Not super well, but it was. Gundam itself, Bandai, has gone out and actually done live streaming for, at least here in the States, some of their new action figure lines, the new Gundam game that's coming up, Gundam Expo. They're getting a lot more comfortable with live streaming, so it would have been nice to see even a fairly small event that was mostly pre-recorded cut into a, like a, form, a nice formal video that was maybe like a 30-minute, hour-long event. Now, of course, the popularity of Gundam Age probably also impacted this, but it still would have been really nice to see that as at least some of the internal members of the Gundam Age team continued to work in Gundam, so... It's not like those people aren't around. They maybe just aren't willing to do it, or Bandai doesn't feel that there's enough groundswell out there, and I can totally understand that. Now, these events also usually are a platform for new content. For example, Double O used their 10-year anniversary event to announce their live stage show. Well, I don't think Gundam Age needs a stage show. It would be cool to see something kind of along those lines, even if it is exclusive to Japan. I'll never get to see the Double O live show, but there's still some cool tidbits that come out of it, and we continually see new Double O designs. It would have been nice for Gundam Age to get a fraction of that treatment. Now, of course, interest levels varying makes that difficult, and while merch did pretty well for Age, its critical reception was not what Bandai wanted, so I can understand them not really pushing too hard for this. These events also could have been used to push, say, something like the Blu-rays, or announce it as a kind of like, hey, it's on a streaming service now, or something along those lines. Speaking of streaming, though, that would be the kind of second big part of this, in putting the entire series up on Gundam Info for like a month. The entire month of October. Just have it there, so people can watch it if you have the... 
English dub that wasn't released in the West, formally, I guess, put that out as well. Or even if it's just the subtitles, having availability is important because you can't really find Gundam Age streaming in very many places legally. So unless you own the Blu-rays already, you're kind of just hoping it comes out one day. It, it's a little bit difficult, and with Blu-ray prices, it's not the easiest thing to get into. It by no means is on something like Netflix or Funimation. It's kind of hard to find. Now, putting that up on Gundam Info and making a fairly big deal out of it could lead into a couple of other things. One, they're kind of already doing, I just don't know 100% how. Uh, so, the Gundam Age World exhibits that they have have some kind of like small contest that seems regional only to Japan for Gundam Age kits. So you do some kind of Gundam Age custom, I guess, or just a straight build. I'm not sure what the rules are, of course, but it would have been nice to see that open to an international audience, especially since COVID's going on. It's not like people are showing up to put their entries in. It would have been cool for these displays in the Gundam Age world to have like a coinciding social media thing where international contestants can send in their photos or whatever, um, what their work in progress is, the final product and everything, and it could just be on a loop on a screen there in Gundam Age world, but also could be found somewhere online, either one of their social media accounts or on a website or just somewhere so you have that visibility and you can honestly use that to push the sell of the big reissue that we've had kind of all year for Gundam Age kits. So that kind of goes hand in hand. It would have been nice to see that, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case and probably won't be the case, sadly. However, still not a lot of hope here, but this event, or I guess rather the Gundam Age World exhibit, could still possibly yield some results, and this is kind of the last big thing that kind of ties into the beginning of what Crow was saying is they could still very possibly bring out those prototypes of the Master Grade H3 and FX, paint them up since we haven't seen them painted, and just have them out and be like, hey, they're coming out in, hell, even 2022 would be nice at this point. Just have a release date would be great. And they're, sure, 10 years old, but 10-year-old high grades aren't that far behind high-grade technology now. So there's really not probably going to be a lot of need for improvements. Probably some minor things here and there, but they're not going to have to retool these kits from the ground up. They already exist. Throw some paint on them, you're good to go. But outside of that, what I would love to have seen had Gundam Mage had the groundswell or Bandai had had the faith in the merchandising at least would be the inclusion of a real grade line. Now, even if it's just the H1, it would have been cool to see that, but it would have been cool to have a proper prototype of the real grade H1 if it ever did exist. Probably didn't, but in this alternative dimension, it exists. <laughs> have that there and then have teasers for 2 and 3. If people get hype, then you kind of know, oh, cool, we'll release 2 and 3. And then if not, then... Bandai does their normal Bandai thing. It's like, no, we uh, we weren't working on that. We don't know what you're talking about. It would have just been nice to see, honestly. The Age 1, the Age 2, the Age 3, well, they're maybe not everyone's cup of teas, are still really solid designs that quite a few people, even who haven't seen Age, can appreciate and enjoy. The Master Grades for the Age 1 and Age 2, at least, are pretty solid, so shrinking those down to a mini Master Grade style RG would be make sense and be pretty popular, I would imagine. Now, of course, a lot of people are calling for other things in the real grade line, and I understand that, but if not the 10-year anniversary of age, we may be stuck waiting till the 20-year anniversary or until Bandai has run out of suits they actually want to make. Unfortunate, but true. I would also, just as kind of a side note as I'm kind of talking about this and thinking about it, it would be cool to see like a Re-100 Gafran any of the Vagan suits being so uniquely like Space Dragon looking would have been cool, especially if we were in some alternative dimension getting the Master Grade H3 FX, and we already have the Master Grade H1 and H2. So it would have just been nice to see those, or the Zetis, or uh, any of the Vagan suits, honestly. Even the Gundam Legolas. Any of those would have been nice. 
But of course, this alternative dimension unfortunately doesn't exist, and all we have is the Gundam Age World exhibits that us here in the West or people who aren't able to travel internationally uh, will probably unfortunately never get to see. But of course, if you've enjoyed this or you kind of have different ideas of what this could have looked like, let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to use or retweet or whatever, share the hashtag FreeMGH3NFX. Get that out there. I know Bandai probably won't listen to us, but it never hurts to try to shout into the void and hope the void whispers back to us. Anyway, I've been the Spicer here for the Gunpla Network. As always, friends, please stay safe and keep on building.